Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. There's a lot of things about gases that you're gonna need to know, and I'm gonna break it down into individual lessons. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single one. This lesson right here, most specifically, variables that affect gases. So go grab your notes, grab something to write with, and let's get started. Now, when we start talking about gas laws and all of the math that's involved and how gases behave, and if you manipulate this variable, what's happening to this variable, we need to talk about a few of these variables before we go any farther. So when we're dealing with gas laws, these are going to be the variables that we need to think about. Temperature, pressure, volume, and moles of gas. Let's look at them a little bit more closely. Temperature. Number one rule, you never can use Fahrenheit. Number two. Celsius is based on the fact that freezing point is at zero degrees. We're like, okay, this is where water freezes. Bam, we're calling that zero degrees Celsius. It just so happened to coincide with the boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, of course, that's when you're at sea level. We're using Kelvin, and Kelvin is based on the temperature at which molecules stop moving. Celsius is based on the freezing point. Kelvin is based on when molecules stop moving. We call this absolute zero or zero kelvins. When we use Celsius and Fahrenheit, we use this degree sign, degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit. But when you're using Kelvin, there is no degrees. It's just K for Kelvin. If we're needing to convert to Kelvins because Kelvin is the only unit that we are going to use as we talk about gas laws. And the reason why is because it's based on molecular motion. And that's our whole point is to talk about molecular motion. Also, there's no negatives in Kelvin. And so that makes all of our numbers to be positive, makes it much, much easier. Here is our formula. We would take any Celsius degrees, add it to 273, and that's going to be how many Kelvins we have. So if we had 25 degrees Celsius, we could just add 273, and that's going to get us 298 Kelvins. Or if we were working a problem and the temperature given to us was negative 31, again, we need to add 273 to that to change that to Kelvins, and I'm getting that to be 242, again, Kelvins. Or if we have a problem and it's 128, again, we're going to add 273, and I'm getting 401 Kelvins. Okay, so that's the important points about temperature. Volume. Here are some very common units you might see for volume. One milliliter, that's the same thing as saying one cubic centimeter or one cc. One liter, that's equal to a thousand milliliters or a thousand centimeters cubed or one decimeter cubed. I would say the most common ones that we're going to see is liter, milliliter, and centimeter cubed. If we had 2,430 milliliters, how many liters would we have? 2,430 milliliters. Milliliters is on top, milliliters goes on bottom, liters goes on top. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. That would give us 2.43 liters. To be honest with you, I don't even mind you just moving the decimal three places for this conversion. I know, crazy, right? Pressure, we've not really talked much about pressure. Pressure, the definition is force per unit area. Force per, per unit area. Now, let's talk about some common pressure units. Atmosphere. If you remember in a previous video, we talked about standard temperature and pressure, STP. Well, all of these pressures here, these are all considered to be standard pressure. So standard pressure is at one atmosphere. That's also equal to 101.3 kilopascals which is also equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. This one might sound familiar. We use this here in America. When you're putting air in your tires and you're putting it to 35, that's pounds per square inch or PSI. We also have 760 tor. This is a pretty old unit. And then we also have 760 millimeters of mercury. You might notice that tor and millimeters of mercury, they're the same number, they're related to each other. All of these units are equal to each other, so all of these would be considered standard pressure. Let's do a couple of conversions, and then we'll be done with this video. Okay, so we said that one atmosphere 
was equal to 101.3 kilopascals, which was equal to 14, whoops, 14.7 pounds per square inch, which is equal to 760 tor, which is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, we can set that, they're all equal to each other. So in this first problem, we're gonna go from atmospheres to millimeters of mercury. So that's all we're going to need. Let's set up our problem. Our given is 4.3 atmospheres. All of these are just going to take one conversion, so don't do more than one. We've got atmospheres on top. We're gonna to bring atmospheres on bottom. We want to know about millimeters of mercury, so that's what we're gonna put on top. These are all equal to each other. So one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Here, this is where I'm getting this from. So we've got 4.3, 4.3 times 760, and that would give us 3,268 millimeters of mercury. Let's do this other conversion. We've got 65.3 PSI, that's our given. Let's set that up. You only are ever gonna need one conversion factor. PSI is on top, so PSI comes on bottom. We're going to KPA, put that on top, PSI, here we are, 14.7, we'll put that here. KPA, here we are, 101.3 KPA. So I'm gonna put 65.3 times, because it's on top, 101.3 kilopascals, divided by 14.7 PSI, and I am getting 449.9. If we wanted three sig figs, I didn't round that to two sig figs. I guess that'd be 3,300, and this would be 500 with the decimal to make their three be three sig figs, KPA. Okay, well, I know that was a lot of information, how to use the variables that you're going to be required to understand for gas law problems. Where's the math? It's coming. Stay tuned for those videos. Until next time, bye, y'all.